Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT official guide, 2022. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when you're working with me. Today we'll solve some problems that you will find on page number 142 and 143. The very first problem on page 142, number 193 is already on the blackboard. They're simply asking for a medium. <coughs> and what you have in the book, if you have the book in front of you, which I hope you do, if you have the book in front of you, you will see that what you have in the book is actually a bar graph. Instead of drawing a bar graph here, which will take forever, I'll just put down the observation from the bar graph Look at the bar graph and confirm it. Confirm all these observations that you see there. We just have to find the median. And there are 11 observations. 1 through 10 and then 90, 90. There are 11 observations, which means the median is just going to be the 5 on the top, 5 on the bottom, the 6th one. So we just have to locate the 6th observation, whatever it is. Do you understand? So let's begin. I'm just going to number them. Whether you start from the highest number and go to the lowest number, or the other way around, whether you go in ascending order or descending order, really doesn't matter. Let's start. The smallest one that I see here is 175. That's one. And we just have to, we just have to, as I said before, we just have to locate the sixth observation and that's all. And after that is something that is under 200. And then we have something that's a little bit over 200. That's number three. Uh, number four observation is way down here, 250. That's the next lowest one. The fifth one is going to be 275 right here. One more to go, a little bit more than 275. And that's going to be a little over 300, this one right here. There you go, that's our median. Something a little over 200. So our answer, our answer is, our answer is median is equal to something a little over 300. Look at the answer choices and find one, find one answer choice that's a little over 300. And that's our answer. And that answer happens to be something 300 plus. That answer happens to be 310. Next one. Don't try to do it precisely, that takes too much time. This is good enough. There is only one answer choice that's a little bit more than 300, and that's all we care about. 194. In 194, we are told that if we see something like this, A raised to K with this symbol, this operation, this thing means, this thing means that A raised to K is a divisor of this quantity B. And a raised to k plus one is not is not a divisor of b. The question is this. The question is this. If we are told that two raised to k this this operation is seventy two, then what could be the value of two? Or uh, what could be the value of k? Let's go through them one by one, shall we? First thing first, first thing first, what does this term mean, divisor? Divisor is just a very fancy way of saying factor. So we're looking for something where, in this case, a is equal to 2, or a is 2, where 2 raised to k is a factor of, factor of 72, but 2 raised to k plus 1, whatever the value of the k happens to be, 2 raised to k plus 1 is not. If we find such a situation, that's our answer. Let's look at it. And since we are dealing with 72, since we are dealing with 72, the best thing to do is write out the 72 with all its factors. Let's do that here, all the prime factors. Since it's an even number, let's start with 2. That's going to make it 36. 36 divided by 2 is going to give you 18. 18 divided by 2 is going to give you 9 and 3. There you go. In other words, in other words, 72 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Let's look at answer choice A. Answer choice A says the k is equal to 2. Did that work? If we put down k equal to 2, that work? 2 raised to 2 is a, is a factor of 72. You can clearly see from here, 2 raised to 2 is 4. And 4 is a factor of 72. 72 divided by 4, 72 will divide evenly into 4. However, however, 2 raised to 3 is also is also 2 raised to 3. You see 2 times 2 times 3. 
that would not work. We're looking for a situation where a raised to k is a factor of 72, but a raised to k plus 1 is not. Here it is, both of them. That won't do. Let's look at b. b says that k is equal to 3. k equal to 3 would work because you see, we only have 3 2's, 2 times 2 times 2. We don't have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. It doesn't have 4 factors of 2. It only has 3. That would work. That would work because 2 raised to 3, which is 8, is a factor of 72. But 2 raised to 3 plus 1 is not. 16 is not a factor of 72. There you go. That's our answer. I'm going to quickly show you now. I'm going to quickly show you now why B, C, and D do not, or rather C, D, and E do not work. In C, we have we have two raised to four. Well, we already established we already established that two raised to four is not a factor of seventy-two. If two raised to four is not a factor of seventy-two, how can two raised to five be? But even before even before we worry about two raised to five, we can stop right here. Two raised to four is not a factor of twenty-two. Uh, 72 and neither is neither is 2 raised to 8 nor is 2 raised to 18 they're all wrong the answer is b number 195 number 195 we are being asked that we have we are, we are being told rather that we have a symmetric Symmetric distribution about the mean and we are told that 68% of the observation lie within one standard deviation. The question is what percentage, what percentage of population lies below one standard deviation. What what percent of the population lies below one standard deviation, which is same as saying what percent of the population below lies below mean plus the deviation. Let's take a look at it. It's a, it's a symmetric distribution. What they're talking about here is a normal distribution. A normal distribution that looks something like this. And in a normal distribution, the peak of, co of course is our mean here. If we go one standard deviation this way, one standard deviation this way, this is going to be mean minus the standard deviation. This is the mean plus the standard deviation. And we are told that this area is 68%. This area right here, all of this area is 68%. If all of this is 68 from, from observation that is mean minus the standard deviation to mean plus the standard deviation, all of this is 68%. That means that this part that we're looking at here, this part that we're looking at here is 34%. We are interested in all the observations that fall below one standard deviation, below anything that falls below it. This is 34%, and everything here that we see, everything that we see on the left hand side of the mean, everything that we see on the left hand side of the mean is 50%. There we go. So, what percentage of the population lies below one standard deviation? The answer is. 34 plus 50, 84%. 84% of the population, 84% of the observation, normally on a standard, on a normal distribution, will fall below one standard deviation. One ninety-six. In one ninety-six. We're going to eat some sandwiches, and we have four sandwiches, which are going to be divided among m people, and we are told that m is more than four. In other words, in other words, let's say, say for example, if m happens to be seven, if you have seven people, we're going to divide four sandwiches equally among seven people. In other words everyone is going to get four seventh of the part. Do you understand? 
However, here it gets a little tricky. So we have four sandwiches. However, here it gets a little tricky. Three of them are divided evenly among M people. And the fourth one, fourth one is divided among M minus four people. In other words, in other words, we have M people, M number of people, and of those people, four of them, four of them tell us, oh no, I don't want the fourth sandwich, I don't like the fourth sandwich, none for me. I do want the part of the first three sandwiches, but the fourth one I do not like, don't give it to me. There are four such people. In other words, the fourth sandwich is going to be divided among M minus four. So that's very easy. We have this fourth sandwich, one sandwich, which is going to be divided among M minus four. Here, one sandwich is going to be divided among M people. We have three sandwiches. So that's what you're going to get. The question simply is, if I were to eat a part of each of these four sandwiches, I eat part of, in other words, I eat part of these three sandwiches and I eat a part of that sandwich. In other words, I want a bit of all four sandwiches. How much would I eat? How much would I end up eating? In other words, they're looking for this. They're looking for the sum of this quantity and this quantity. That's what we're looking for. If you want the sum of this quantity and that quantity, we have to find the common denominator. The common denominator here is m times m minus 4. m times n minus m minus 4. And here we have 3. 3 is going to be multiplied by this denominator. And then here we have 1. And that 1 is going to be multiplied by m. That's all. So 3m minus 12. 3m minus 12 and 1m. 3m minus 12 plus 1m over m minus 4 and that's going to give us 4m minus 12 over m times m minus 4 and that's all that's our answer and that's all they're looking for 197 In 197, we, we are being asked which equation has root of 1 plus root 2. So there are five equations that are given to us. Our job is to locate one equation that happens to have a root of this thing. We have two choices here, how we go about this problem. One choice is to go in a straightforward classical way, the traditional way, the algebraic way, the geeky way, the nerdy way, which is not what I did here, which will take some time. I don't like that idea. What I did was this. What I did was I figured out the value of this thing. One is one, obviously, and root two is approximately 1.4. So this quantity, this quantity is approximately 1 point, or is 2.4. This quantity is approximately, Two point four, and all I did was substitute. All I did was substitute. I substituted this value of two point four in each one of the equation, and see which one works. The first one says x squared plus two x minus one. Now, mind you, if I were taking the real exam myself, I would not do what I'm about to do. You can sim you simply have to look x squared uh, two point four squared, and I hope that you know this part. I hope that you know that twenty five times twenty five. Is 625. Obviously, you know that thing, which also tells us that 2.4, 2.5 times 2.5 is 6.5. It's 6 and a quarter. In other words, 2.5 times 2.5 is 6 and a quarter. 2.4 squared is, something, is going to be something very close to 6. Something very close to 6 plus 2.4, just a minus 1. That's not going to equal to 0. Even if you have, the, even if you have, the, even if you didn't add this part, we still have a problem because 4.8 minus 1 is not going to give us 0. That's to B. B says x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now that might get us some place because now we are subtracting a bigger quantity. Let's find out what 2.4 is. 24, 24 is 16, carry 1, 8, 9, 8, 4, 6, 7, there you go. So 2.4 squared 
2.4 squared is approximately 5 and 3 quarters. That's what I'm going to use. So 5 and 3 quarters plus 1, it's going to give us 6 and 3 quarters. 6 and 3 quarters minus 4.8, you see? 2 times 2.4 is 4.8. 4.8, and here we have 6 and a quarter, 6 and 3 quarters. That's not going to give us 0. Let's do the next one. C is even simpler, x squared plus 2x plus 1. That's not going to give us 0 because we are adding everything. How can it possibly be equal to 0? Everything is being added. If it, x, if it starts with x squared, then we need to subtract a lot of things in order for it to get down to the 1 part at the end. Now d says x squared minus 2x minus 1. There you go, that might be helpful. x squared, we agreed was 5 and 3 quarters minus 4.8 minus 1. There you go. 5 and 3 quarter minus 5.8 is approximately 0. And that's a possible candidate. That should, that should have been D. I miswrote it. It's not an E. That's the D. And that's a possible candidate. Let's very quickly rule out E and then we are done. If you can rule out E, then the answer is D. E says X squared minus X minus 1. That's not going to give us 0. Look, x squared is 5 and 3 quarters, 5 and 3 quarters minus 2.4 minus 1, 5 and 3 quarters minus 3.4 does not equal 0. This on the other end does, it does very close to it, so the answer is D. Number 198. Number 198. In 198, we are told that in some country, the unemployment rate, unemployment rate in 1992 was 16%. By 1996, we are told that the unemployment rate had fallen to 9%. We are also told that the number of unemployed workers or rather number of workers, not unemployed workers. The number of workers in this country was 20% more in 1996. In 1996, we had 20, number of people that were working in this country was 20% more than what the number that we had working in 1992. Here's the question. The question is approximately, what is the percentage change in the number of unemployed worker. In other words, in other words, we have to figure out how many people, how many people, what number, how many people were unemployed in 96, or 92 rather, and then figure out how many people were unemployed in 96, and then figure out what's the percentage change from this year to that year. Let's do this, shall we? As you can see here, I left this open here. There's nothing here. Whatever this number is here, it doesn't matter what it is. Whatever its number is, this number is 20% more. It should say 20% more, not 20 more. It should say it is 20% more. We have 20% more people working compared to the number of people that were working in 92. So let's make up a number for 92. Since we're dealing with percentages, the easiest, the simplest, the quickest way to work with this thing is to pretend that we had 100 people working in 92. If you had 100 people working in 92, in 96 we have 120 people working. Well, that's not enough. Now we have to figure out how many people are unemployed, how many people are not working. Well, that's very simple. In 92, in 92 we're going to carry this thing down. In 92 we have 16 people that were unemployed because it's 16% of 100. Here we have to figure out 9% of 120. We know 10%. 10% is going to equal 12. 10% 10 of 120 is 12. You want 9%, so subtract one more percent, and 1% per, 1 of 120 is 1.2. Which, In other words, 9% is approximately 11. So before we had 16 people unemployed, now we have 11 people unemployed. That's a drop of 5. That's a drop of 5 divided by the point of reference, which is the original number, which is this number. 5 divided by 16 is approximately 5 divided by 15. In other words, we had a drop of about 33%.
it is a drop because we're going from 16 to 11 it is a drop so find one answer choice which says drop of about 33 percent whichever answer that comes closest to it that's your answer and the correct answer here is answer choice d which talks about oh sorry not d d talks about the increase uh, answer choice b b says decrease answer choice says that the number of people number of unemployed people decreased by 30%. Okay, maybe 33. 199. In 199, we are told that we have 12 pens. We are told that of those 12 pens, 3 of them are defective. And 9 of them are non-defective. What we want to find out is that what, is, what are the odds of picking two that are non-defective. I think the way they phrased it, number 199, uh, if you were to buy two pencils selected at random from the select, what are the probability that neither pen is defective? That's what they said. This is, this is what, how I wrote down what's the odds of picking two that are non-defective, which is same as saying what are the odds of picking two pens that are neither defective. Pick two such that neither of them is defective. In other words, we want to find we want to pick two pens at random and the question is what are the odds that two pens come from here in a non-defective part. Of course they all look the same, all identical. We're just going to pick two. So let's pick the first one. The first one we picked, we have nine defective out of a total of twelve. We have done that part. Now let's pick the second one. Second one, by the time, the fact that we already picked up one non-defective we already picked up one non-defective because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the odds of picking two non-defective or the odds of picking two pens such that neither of them is defective. That's, those are the odds. Now we have only eight left because we already picked one out of the bag. Now we only have eight left out of eleven. Why eleven? Because we already picked one. Now we do not have twelve, twelve of them in the bag. We only have eleven. That's our answer. We just have to simplify it. 8 goes 2 times into 4, that's your 3, 3 is going to go through here, there you go. So it's 3 out of, 3 times 2, 3 times 2, which is 6 out of 11. The odds of picking 2 non-defective pen out of this bag is about a little over half, a little over 50%. Number 200. In 200, we are told that we're going to buy apples, and each apple we are told each apple costs 40 cents. We're also going to buy some bananas, and each banana costs 60, 60 cents. And we are told that we're going to buy 10 fruits. That's our first equation. We're going to buy a total of 10 fruits. That's our first equation. If A represents the number of apples that we buy and B represents the number of bananas that we buy, then this has to equal 10. That's our first equation. Then we are further told that the average price, average price is 56 cents. That's going to give us our second equation. Of course, we have to have two independent equations because we have two unknown. That's our second equation. Average price is 56 cents. Since we are buying, since we are buying a apples, a number of apples, and each costs 40 cents. A, not not four. Since we are buying a apples, and each costs 40 cents, and we are buying b bananas, and each costs 60 cents. The total price here, and so we and we are buying total of. 10 of them, we are told that, 10 of them, and this has to equal, so that's the total price we're going to pay, and if you divide by the number of fruit that we buy, which is 10, if you divide that by number 10, by, by 10 rather, it should equal 56. That's our second equation. Let's see what we can do. Let's first simplify this equation. 
what can we do here? Well, first thing I'm going to do is divide by 10. There's a zero here, there's a zero here, there's a zero here. Let's divide this side by 10. So zeros go away. So the zeros are going to go away. Now I see 4, 6, and 56. Let's divide the entire equation by 2. So that's going to become 2. That's going to become 3. 5 is made up of 2 twos, and then 16 is made up of 8 twos. There you go. So we can end up with 2 times A plus 3 times B equals 28. So that's our second equation, that was our first equation. We still don't know what the question is. What is it that they're asking? What do they want? What they want is this. So let's, let's write down this equation. A plus B equals 10. We're going to use this equation in a second. What do they want? What do they want us to find out? Here's, here's the question. The question is, how many, how many fewer Bananas must be buy so that the average price is only 52 cents. That's what we're going to find out. How many fewer bananas should we buy so that the average price instead of being 56 cents, which is here, I don't want to pay 56 cents per fruit. That's too much for me. My budget is 52 cents. I just want to buy on average 52 cents per fruit. I already put in some apples and some bananas in my in my basket. The question is, and because bananas cost 60 cents and apples only cost 40 cents, it is the banana that is driving up the average. I want to bring that average down. If I want to bring the average down, I have to get rid of some of the more expensive item. The more expensive of the two are the bananas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking bananas out of my shopping cart one at a time and I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to take out the bananas out of my shopping cart until I reach a point where the average price is only 52 cents. The question simply is how many bananas do I have to put back? How many fewer bananas should we buy so they're bringing the average down to 52? Before we can answer that question I first have to know how many apples and how many bananas do I have in my basket? Let's find that out. So here we have one equation, here's the other equation. Let's multiply this equation by 2 so we end up with 2a plus 2b has to equal 20. Subtract the second equation for the first one and let's see what happens. a is going to drop out, 3b minus 2b is going to give us b and this is going to give us 8. Huh. Yes, sure. okay, so we have 8 bananas which means we must have had 2 apples. Now, how many fewer bananas should we buy? I already know the answer. I already know how many fewer bananas I'm going to buy. Yes, I'm quick. I'm going to buy, let's buy, X fewer bananas. See, I told you I already knew. So we're going to buy X fewer bananas we're going to pick up the work here. So remember, we had eight bananas already. We have eight bananas right now in our basket. We're going to put X of them back. We're going to buy X fewer. In other words, we're going to buy eight minus X bananas. And each banana costs 60 cents. The number of apples that we're buying, that has not changed. We're still buying two apples at 40 cents each. 40 cents each. Now the question is, how do I find the average price of this thing? Well, before we, had, before we had 10 fruit, we no longer have 10 fruit, so we're not going to divide by 10. We are buying X fewer bananas, we have 10 minus X fruit. And that quantity has to equal 52. Because we want average price to be 52. That's all. We're almost done. All we have to do is solve the simple equation, we are, we are done. I'm going, to, I'm going to raise all of this thing. I'm going to first take a break for a second. We're going to erase everything and solve that equation. Is there anything we can do first? Oh, yes, we, we can. 40 is a multiple of 4. That's a multiple of 4. That's a multiple of 4. Why do we divide this equation by 4? So this 40 becomes a 10. Six, 60 is going to become 15. 5 is made up of 1, 4. After we take away 4 from the 5, we have a remainder of 1, which goes to 12, and that's made up of 3, 4s. There we go. So we end up 2 times 10, which is 20. 
plus 15 times 8 minus x should equal 13 times this quantity 10 minus x so that gives us 20 plus 120 minus 15x is equals 130 minus 13x since this is a negative 15x we would like to, to we would like this quantity to be positive when we are solving for x let's bring the 15x here And let's bring this 130 here. So that's going to go away. This guy is going to go away. And that's going to give us positive 15x and a negative 13x is going to give us 2x. That's very simple. Here we have 20 plus 120 is 140. 140 minus 130 is 10. There you go. There you go. So the answer is we're going to buy five fewer bananas five fewer bananas and if you like we can very quickly verify that our work is correct by making sure that after putting up we're going to take five bananas out of a basket out of our, out of our shopping basket we're going to take five bananas out of our shopping basket put them back on the shelves and now we can quickly verify that this stage our average price is 52 cents let's do that here since we had eight bananas before and we are buying we are putting back five we must have bought three of them we buy three of them, each of them cost 60 cents, and we are buying how many apples did we have before? Well, if we bought eight bananas before, we must have bought two of them, two apples, and they were costing 40 cents. So now we are only buying five pieces of fruit. There we go. And that should work out to be 52 cents if our work is correct. Well, that's very easy. This is, this is five, this is 40, this is 60. I'm just going to divide by five. There we go, 16 plus 36, oh what do you know, it is 52, by golly, that was a shocker, we're going to stop right here, we'll meet again tomorrow, we're going to pick up from where we left off, in the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, if you would like to work with me, if you would like to hire me, to help you get ready for the exam, send me an email, go to my website at keshwaniprev.com, from there you can send me an email, or if you wish to tell me a little bit more about yourself, you can fill out the form on the website and we'll talk some more. Alright? Bye now.